another exciting edition of RMU Tonight. I'm Amy Morgan. And I'm Molly Spurk, filling in for the wonderful Kevin Williams. And this weekend, RMU Colonial Theater proudly presents 1776, consequently, right where Kevin is. And it's a musical comedy that shows the history and human emotion behind the Declaration of Independence. 1776 is the Colonial Theater's third and final show in this year's season, Revolution in America, showcasing times that have changed American history. Kevin, our beloved co-host, is not able to be here tonight because he is in the show, but before he left, he took us behind the scenes of rehearsals of this epic musical, so let's take a look. Theater, the Colonial Theater is preparing for this week's presentation of 1776, a musical about the Declaration of Independence and how America got its start. Let's go inside with an RMU Tonight's exclusive look at the rehearsals. It's perfect for Robert Morris. Robert Morris is named for a signer of the Declaration of the Independence. We have Adams Hall, we have Hancock, we have Franklin, Jefferson. So it makes total sense for it to be something we do on this campus. I say of men that doesn't happen everywhere and also still we've cast colorblind and genderblind so that there are unexpected casting choices made in the show which I think actually says a lot of good things about the show. Obviously, I mean, this is the foundation of our country, uh, the signing of the Declaration of Independence and how it all came together. Uh, the, the fact that this play actually uses historical text and documentation from the uh, Continental Convention is, is a really, really cool aspect of it to bring that to a, a musical or a theater setting. RMU Tonight, I'm Kevin Williams. That looks good. I think it's going to be good. I think I might see it Sunday, I believe. Is it on Sunday? Yes, it is on Sunday. It's like okay. 2 o'clock, I think. Yeah, I like going and on the afternoon ones. The other nights it shows at 8. 8 o'clock. And I heard it's about Massey. 3 hours long, so it's a long one. That's, that's what a, I heard. Yeah, that's a decent size. It's going to be very enjoyable, though. Every time I've seen a musical here, it's been really good. You know, I was my freshman year. I was in the first one. Were you? I, did I not really know this was. About Molly. It, <laughs> it was pretty exciting. That's good. But because of musicals, let's talk about our music sure. for the week. And finally, after years and years of rumors circulating the airways, it seems that superstars Jay Z and Beyonce Knowles have finally tied the knot. Amazing, right? CNN has confirmed from Hollywood Insiders that the couple was married in a quiet ceremony last Friday at Jay-Z's apartment in California. Now, the scheduled guests included Gwyneth Paltrow, Mary J. Blige, and former Destiny's Child members Kelly Rowland and Michelle Williams. A great turnout there. 
Although many sources have confirmed the marriage, representatives from bo both Knowles and Jay-Z have declined to comment. And even better, Ashley Simpson and her boyfriend, Pete Wentz, are now engaged to be married. That's right. The bassist, or the only cute guy from Fall Out Boy, is going to marry Jessica Simpson's little sister. How exciting. I'm, I'm really excited about this. But Simpson and Wentz have been dating since 2006, and they posted a statement online that said they are thrilled to share that they are happily engaged. So, um, well, congratulations, and I hope it works. <laughs> This August, the annual La La Palooza will be one to remember with new headliners including Radiohead, Kanye West, Nine Inch Nails, and Rage Against the Machine. The 2008 lineup features many alternative rockers that are bound to cause a fiasco, Lupe fiasco that is. The young rock rap artists will be joining the talent of Gnarls Barkley, Flogging Molly, Wilco, G Love and Special Sauce, and many, many more. The new and improved La La Palooza is three-day family-friendly affair in Lake Michigan near downtown Chicago. Yahoo News says it has rebranded itself as one of America's premier mega rock festivals alongside Coachella and Bonnaroo. Last year it grossed a whopping 9.8 million, making it the fifth largest highest grossing festival worldwide. La La Palooza serve, serves as the kickoff to the second part of Radiohead's North American tour. 40-year-old singer Tony Braxton had chest pains at Flamingo Hotel and Casino Monday night. She was hospitalized overnight and released after precautionary tests. The cause of the chest pain was unknown, but six-time Grammy, Grammy winner has been treated for the past for a viral inflammation of the heart. The hotel was offering refunds to the canceled show on Tuesday. Flamingo president Don Marindo commented, we wish Tony a quick recovery and would like to th take all the time she needs to regain optimal health. We are looking forward to her return at the end of the week. That's interesting. Tony Braxton um, having heart pains that I feel bad because I, I actually am a fan of her. I'm not. No, I'm really? really? Yeah. You don't like don't break my or unbreak my heart? That's a good one. No, I don't. It's a little cheesy, at all. but I guess because I don't know. My brother and sister <laughs> liked her. I don't know if that's too cheesy, but speaking of music, let's see what's on the top of the charts. Top 10 music videos. One, Mariah Carey, Touch My Body. Number two, Rihanna, Don't Stop the Music. Number three, Jordan Sparks featuring Chris Brown, No Air. Number four, Lil Wayne, Lollipop. I love that song. Number five, Alicia Keys, No One. And then we have the top 10 radio singles. Topping the list, my all-time favorite, Love Song by Sarah, Sarah Bareilles, comes to concert August 21st. She's a good one. I'm gonna be there. Number two, With You, Chris Brown, three, No Air, was on the chart you just said. Four, See You Again, Miley Cyrus. It's going to be my new ringtone, so um, yeah, pretty excited. Mm, skipping down a few, Sorry, Buck Cherry is at number seven. Don't Stop the Music at eight with, by Rihanna. And number 10, Touch My Body by Mariah Carey. We have the top five albums. Number one, George Strait, Trovador. I actually have, I'm not a country fan, so I do not know that one. Number two, Accelerate, R.E.M. Number three, Volume 27, Now That's What I Call Music. Number four, Day 26, Day 26. Number five, Soundtrack, Alvin and the Chipmunks, who would have known? When the first Nows came out, like, I remember those days. Like, I'm kind of sad they're up to 27, but I had, like, six. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kevin and I actually talked about this, because Nows been on there quite a few times now. And I, I like the Nows, at least. I don't know. So <laughs> You were cool if you had them. You're like, yeah. oh, which Nows do yes. you have? <laughs> so, <laughs> mm, good music. Always it is, good it music. Is good. Yeah, it really is. But coming up after the break, we will let you know which movies you should go see this weekend and what the critics thought of them. Stay tuned.
number one, Bra Boys. We have chapter 27 coming out as well. Prom Night, Smart People, Street Kings, The Visitor, and Young at Heart. That's all pretty exciting, but at the top of the box office for last week, we have 21 with, um, oh, who's his name? Just in Across the Universe. He was oh, amazing. Yeah, he was good. But um, we have Nims Island, Leatherheads at 12.6 million. Shutter down number nine with 2.8 million. 10,000 BC, also only made 2 million, 2.8 million. Little, little short there. <laughs> Well, here's a look at the Sundance feature film, Smart People, starring Dennis Quaid, Ellen Page, and Sarah Parker. Self-absorbed. I think self-absorption is underrated. My name is Professor Weatherhold. Because it's important that we all get to know one another, I would like you to wear these. I've taken two other courses from you, and you still don't know what my name is, do you? I most certainly do. What is it? Look, Miss Chen. You just looked. Hello? I'm calling about your father. He's here in the ER. He's had an accident. So what happened to your head? It's all a blur. Had they suffered seizures before? Not in a while. You can't legally drive for six months. I'm not being your chauffeur. These times are crucial. Young Republicans, Model UN, and I the perfect score on the SAT. It's my girl. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Aren't you happy to see your brother, Lawrence? Adopted brother. I love you. What the hell are you doing here? Watching a documentary on snow apes. Yeah, he's pretty sure he's gonna move in and be a driver. I'm here to help. You sound like a motivational speaker. I'm a little low on cash right now. It's kind of a win-win situation. Make a left. When's the last time you did something fun like a normal teenager? I don't think you're very happy. Well, you're not happy, and you're my role model. When's the last time you told your daughter you were proud of her for making straight A's? Physicians. Kind of uncultured, like, oh, so many in the medical profession. Everyone in my life is going crazy. You're the one that's crazy, socially retarded, and can't get along with women. Should be gay. Oh, Jesus. I'm in an after-school special. Hi. You're the doctor girlfriend, right? You're the adopted brother, right? And the cake? Lexitone. That's an antidepressant. I stole it from the break room. Welcome. I translated the recipe from old French. And that's why it tastes like burnt tires. Well, if you'd like, I could uh, jam that up here. These children haven't been properly parented in many years. They're practically feral. That's why I was brought in. <laughs> People isn't getting the highest grades in reviews, the novelist turned screenwriter Mark Porior gives the capable cast some snazzy dialogue, but he loads his script with so many nuances that it makes the movie hard to accept. But with the more than stellar cast, it leads to believe that this movie could definitely be worth watching. What do you think, Molly? You gonna head over to that I'd like movie? to say two things. One, I love Sarah Jessica Parker, like absolutely love you her. You watch Sex in the City? Every single, like yeah, all of them, too. every single episode, mm -hmm. absolutely love her. Two, the movie was filmed in Pittsburgh, mostly around Carnegie really? Mellon. Really? I did not know this at all. And that just That's makes me want to go watch it so I can be like, I've seen that street. <laughs> also, Ellen Page is in Juno, and she is the main character in that, and that is a really good movie. So I'm sure the acting in that, it already looks like it's going to be good. So. I think, overall, I think it looks like a funny movie. Like, you have Dennis Quaid, it's cute, who funny. is a great actor. Like you a have... romantic comedy. Exactly, yeah. and it looks funny. Mm -hmm. Sarah looks... Jessica Parker, who doesn't love her? <laughs> Obviously you do. <laughs> no, I love her too. She's good. She really so. is. She's a great actress in everything she does. So yeah. I'm really, really looking forward to this movie. I can't wait till it comes I go out. see it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But we have best friends Brittany Snow and Jessica Straup who co-star in this next film, Prom Night. So let's take a look at their night to remember. What color is your dress? It's a champagne color. Then it's a little sexy. <laughs> you look beautiful. Oh, 
time of our lives. Sure, I'm gonna miss you guys. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, everyone, Bridgeport High's prom king and prom queen are. with a young female student. He went psycho. He's been on a maximum security prison two, three days ago. Claire? There's somewhere in this hotel. Is anybody here? Hello? Donna. Oh, I've missed you. Goosebumps. <laughs> According to movie critic Louise Keller, Prom Night is a snappy teen movie that is short and sharp as the blade bloodied by its distinctively featured psychopathic killer. It is well done and our imaginations are sure to create the horror. Oh boy, that seriously gave me goosebumps. I hate scary movies. Oh, at I the like, same time I love them. But. I like scary movies, but that was definitely well, that was a little scary. Yeah, so, um, quite a bit. I don't yeah. know. I, I do you think you're gonna see it, Molly? I really don't know. Like, I think I will. I like Britney Snow. I think she's a good actress. Especially John Tucker Must Die. I love that movie. Good movie. So much. One what? of my favorites. But dude, mine too. Yeah, that makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> it. I like it. I, I like Britney Snow, and I like the other actors. So we'll see how it goes. But, but definitely looked extremely scary. Like the the jumpiness. Maybe <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, speaking of thrillers, the drama thriller Street Kings follows a veteran LAPD detective trying to discover the killers of his former partner. Let's take a sneak peek of Street Kings. Not have that. So, you know, critics, they're not that keen on no, Street Kings. No, there's Keanu Reeves is in it, and he's not the best actor in the world. I think he can do some decent stuff, but really, the critics are saying that Street Kings really isn't that great of a movie. It's like a combination of like action and drama that is totally melodramatic. Melodramatic. <laughs> I Well, it, I don't know, because Keanu Reeves is, doesn't have the best acting abilities, but then you have Forrest Whitaker, who's a really good actor. Do you know who that is? I've, I've never even heard of him oh, before. Okay, so, never um, mind then. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> too, too bad for that. But it's basically supposedly just like your basic cop robber movie. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're into that repetitive, kind of, kind of boring thing. Um, I wish, I want, I want to see a clip of that because it looked, it looked like, you know, enough action in it to make it a good movie and like thriller worthy, but not too scary, you know, so. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm still, I think it's boring and it didn't look that great anyways, so. <laughs> boring. <laughs> Like, but really, you have your normal action movie, and it's once you've seen one, you've seen all, pretty yeah. much. That's my philosophy on life. So, yeah, I really, I'm not that keen on it. Up next, we have Idle Games and Red or Blue. You choose, so stick around.
Are you an office junkie? The hit television show, that is. NBC has de decided to make a spin-off of the NBC show, The Office. Details are not yet disclosed as to whether the spin-off will feature current office workers transferring to a different branch, or if the spin-off will just be a faux documentary workplace format that the two shows share. Either way, if you are a fan of The Office, this could be the new show for you. It is set to air in February 2009. The Office is set to return with an hour-long episode in September. Last night, American Idol didn't do their usual results show. Instead, the famous Fox show did the annual charity show called Idol Gives Back. It raised awareness and funds to benefit six great charities, the Children's Defense Fund, Children's Health Fund, the Global Fund, Make It Right Malaria, no, no More Malaria, and Save the Children. All of these charities have a proven track record of making a positive in th impact through responsible living. They raised $22 million. Last night, tune in next week, Tuesday and Wednesday night, for the top seven results. You know, I've never heard of malaria no more, but I think it sounds like a really fun <laughs> I, It's kind of like a cute name. I guess they're trying to make like the epidemic more on a lighter note, I guess, because that's a pretty big problem. So We sang a song in like elementary school about malaria. It was like a camp song. It was really? Malaria. I never heard of anything. <laughs> Do you remember how it went? Not really, other than it was about a kid at camp. And he had malaria. Really? Yeah. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds quite interesting. But speaking of pretty interesting things, uh, I know a lot of people are into games. So those of you who are into machinima, video game filmmaking that is, and happen to be Halo fans, the new series and Red vs. Blue Reconstruction will be hitting the internet very soon. Let's take a sneak peek. A memo to the chairman of the oversight subcommittee from the director of Project Freelancer. Dear chairman, I write today in response to your committee's request for more information about our program and the suspected incident at Outpost 17B. No doubt by now, you have reviewed the video logs transmitted by our recovery agents dispatched to the region. I'm sure you have seen the empty bases, the barricades constructed by the survivors, the cryptic warning left on the wall, the battles that apparently took place between team members that had turned on one another. And of course, the ship. While we cannot say for certain, I share your concern we have an unfortunate post-project scenario taking place. However, I take exception to your assertion that we were warned this was a possibility. I would like to remind the subcommittee members that anything is possible. Some things are probable. This is what is. And my agency, as it always has, will continue to deal with what is. Until it is no more. So red versus blue, who are you for? Red or blue? <laughs> well... If you're in hmm. Halo, I guess. I actually, I've never, I've played Halo once, I think, in my life, and I don't remember playing it. So, um, I, I, don't, I don't mind Halo. I think I've played it once or twice as well. I play it with my buddies, and I know a lot of guys play it with their buddies, so. I'm not a really a big video game fan, but I mean, I really like the video game, like the movie. Yeah, they actually have, of it, so. uh, Halo actually has one, two, I think this is the third Halo um, Red vs. Blue video, I believe, so. I know our graphics guy was really excited about it because he's into games. So that's really cool. Like, more power to you if you're like 
I'm really, really bad at video, video games. games. The only good one I'm good at is <laughs> Rock Band. Well, it's fun to do video games with your buddies, but thinking of being with your buddies and having fun, um, looking to impress your buddies, we have lots of gadgets that will do that. If you are looking to impress your friends at parties and need a good gift for your beer buddy, well, look no further. The original ring thing found on thinkgeek.com will make your life th you the life of the party. This ring is worn on your middle finger, cat's ears facing your palm. To use, you simply hook the bottom cap and lift your wrist. The ring is available in sizes 8 through 15. Well, I mean, <laughs> 8 through 15, I think I'm like size seven or six. So yeah, that if, really <laughs> would not work for my finger. It sounds at like all. a thing that they're making just for guys. And is that fair, Molly? I don't think so. Especially at, like, it's an all-girl show tonight. Yeah. We should talk about this. I do not have big fingers. Like there's no way it would fit in. Maybe I could like put the bottle part on my finger, but yeah. then it would just It sounds like a neat gadget though. And I'd rather just have a magnet on my fridge and use that. A magnet? Yeah, you know how you have the magnet and the beer cap thing? Of course, I don't drink, of oh, course. Yeah. But and then you just have the thing and it just pops off and yeah. it works. Well, sounds fun, but as always, thanks for tuning in and have a great night. Thank you so much for joining us, but, and I'm of course Molly Spurk. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget to check out Colonial's Theater's production of 1776 with Kevin Williams. And we have the trailer for Street Kings, so um, check that out. Have a good night. My men. Every cop wants justice. There are two cop killers out there. You can get these guys. But how they get it. You can use monsters, man. Is what sets them apart. Show me. You expect me to leave my car in the hood, man? Hey, give me a body. It's on its way. This is our world! So what do they call you? Quicks, man. Quicks? <laughs> Not quick enough. We're the police. We can do whatever the hell we want. So we're just gonna go in there and kill him? No, I'm gonna ask him some questions. Then we're gonna kill him. Where we